G'day and welcome to Zoom TV, the show where we explore everything that flies, drives and floats and take you along for the experience. Today, we're in the very beautiful and picturesque suburb of South Perth. Chilly day and my friend Cassandra's a bit under the weather. I am under she, the weather today. She's a little bit sick today no, now, please. But I thought I'd soldier on. I didn't want to pass up this opportunity to take the driver's seat with you again. What a trooper! Yes. What's coming up on the big show today? First up, Dan Paris checks out the new Kia Cerato. Yes. The motor punches out a class leading 129 kilowatts of power. And following that, Cass takes the triple S Nissan Pulsar for a few bog laps. I do, the turbo. You little demon. The triple S turbo is the cream of the Pulsar range crop, with awesome accelerating power, yet pretty low fuel consumption. And me old mate, with emphasis on the old, Ross Dungerton is back in town. What's he, he doing, Cass? He was checking out What's the Chrysler is Grand he? Voyager. Is he? The Grand Voyager comes into its own when there are large loads to carry. And Cash, you know your friend, Aaron Pitt? He's been out picking up strangers again. How's he now? Uh, yeah, oh, uh, actually, he gets away with <laughs> it because he calls it the celebrity hitchhiker. <laughs> I don't know. What's he, who's he got? He's got Sarah Grace this week, actually. Sarah, who's, uh, forgive me, I'm an old but Who is Sarah Grace? She is a lovely actress from Winners and Losers. Mm, can't wait. My character was getting married, and I was getting married in two weeks' time. So we started talking about that, and I think that might have helped me get the role. So sit back, strap yourselves in, because it is time, Alan, for Zoom TV. I'm not sure if it's because the producers of this program are looking after me or if I'm generally seeing the glass half full, but it seems almost every car I've been asked to road test has left me rather impressed. You must think I'm here to talk things up, but I'm not, I swear. What I think I need is a bit of a no-nonsense vehicle, something that uh, opens the door to a bit of comparative criticism and balances out all that praise that I've been giving. My chances are slim, though, because my brief says I have to pick up the new John Hughes Kia Cerato sedan. Now, I've never been in one, but I've seen the pictures and they look all right. I promise I'll be hard on this one. As you can see, it's a modest looking car. Actually, that's a bit harsh. Let me try that again. As you can see, the Cerato makes a bold statement about your life and where you're going. No, 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 that's far too much. How's this? The Cerato is a stylish machine for which its creators have combined precise engineering and feel-good fuel economy to produce a vehicle with glorious levels of comfort. Yeah, now we're talking. The reason for that great fuel economy is a two-litre petrol engine. In a vehicle this size, that's enough to call it sporty. In fact, the motor punches out a class leading 129 kilowatts of power that's responsive around the city and smooth on the open road. Partner that with a six speed auto transmission and these manual style paddle shifters and all of a sudden, this car has become a whole lot of fun. There I go again, talking it up. Can't help myself. Those paddle shifters are worth a closer look too. They're right here behind the steering wheel. And what they mean is your hands stay firmly on the wheel when you change gears. And while we're here, there's a couple of things I think you'll like. It's no big deal though, just a couple of things you probably already knew. Check this out. This is the power sunroof and it's got this mechanism in it that senses things like the kid's hands and it prevents it from closing. And the SLI model that I'm in has these very comfy leather seats and full auto temperature control. And these, by the way, are called mood rings. Classy. Now, the vehicle is full of safety features, but can I just focus on the airbags for now? Now, during a collision, both the driver and the passenger are protected by dual airbags. There's curtain bags that run along the side of the vehicle, and then there's also side dual bags that provide, well, just more protection, really. There's ABS, which ensures braking is distributed between the four wheels. ESC keeps the car stable using a number of sensors, such as wheel speed, limiting engine torque, and TCS, which monitors grip and reduces wheel spin. Now on this model, the SLI, they've included these four ultrasonic sensors which they've mounted right here on the rear bumper. And what these guys do is they let you know when you're about to reverse over something or someone. It's a very handy feature. 
I should mention that the Serato comes as a hatch as well, and both models have so much room that you can throw all your gear in and get away for the weekend. There's another compliment. I must have an addiction. Or could it be that this genuinely is a great car? I think the best thing for me to do from here is to suggest that you nick down and you check it out for yourself at the John Hughes showroom in Victoria Park. If you'd like to get to see it sooner, you can follow the links from our site, zoomtv.com.au. Do you want to get more out of your diesel? Well, let the team at United Fuel Injection help you. They're the experts in diesel fuel injection, turbocharging and vehicle performance technologies. Make an appointment today and get more talk out of your diesel at unitedfuel.com.au. My friend Cass here is going to go for a ride in a car where one S wasn't enough, two S's weren't enough. Cassandra goes for a ride in the highly anticipated Nissan Pulsar Triple, Triple S. S. That's right. It's been a long time coming. The Pulsar is back and I'm going to be checking it out after the break. Here's a cheeky test for you. What car am I driving right now? Hard to tell from this angle, I know, but there are a few things here that might give it away, like the spacious interior, the comfy ergonomic seats, the turbo engine. Any guesses? It's the all new Nissan Pulsar Triple S Turbo Hatch. And thanks to Northside Nissan, I get to take it out for a spin. After seven long years, Nissan finally decided to bring back their most popular small car. And this latest Pulsar range is on a whole new level. The Triple S Turbo is the cream of the Pulsar range crop, with awesome accelerating power, yet pretty low fuel consumption. Now, when you hear the word turbo, you might think of young guys in cars that they can neither afford nor drive properly. But with the Pulsar Triple S, the 1.6 litre petrol turbo is understated. The tyres will struggle to grip the road under really heavy acceleration, but the light handling of the Pulsar means you'll never get into any sticky situations. When it comes to the handling, all of the new Pulsar models are pretty much the same. They're all fitted with the same mechanical underpinnings, but the Triple S is built more for a sporty drive than a relaxing one. Hot hatches are really popular right now and the market is getting a bit overloaded. But what sets the Pulsar Triple S apart from the crowd is how roomy it is. The Triple S only comes in a six-speed manual, but the last seven years have been kind to us in the way of technology. Of course, the new Pulsars come with all those mod cons you come to expect with any new car, including Bluetooth. And with the Triple S, you also get Bluetooth streaming, reversing sensors and sat-nav. So Richard, the Pulsar range, it's been seven years since the last model came out. What made Nissan decide to bring it back out? They introduced a model called the Tita seven years ago and the public outcry for that on that particular model when the name disappeared was massive. Nissan didn't realise that uh, the reputation and the following Pulsar had here in Australia and, and has today. So from that day forward we as, as the dealers of Australia basically said look we'd like to see the name Pulsar come back. It's a name that everybody in Australia knows about, they like the car, they like what it stands for, so finally uh, the public get to win and they get the name Pulsar back in the market in Australia. It's back. So you're letting me take the Triple S out today, what makes this one the top of the Pulsar range? The Triple S is the um, model in the range that has what we call the DIG or the turbocharged engine. So it's uh, the ultimate for performance and safety. So Triple S stands for that and, and value for money in terms of what you get out of this car. The adage for Pulsar and for Triple S is more in the car for less money. So an 18 year old through to a 50 year old would be happy to drive one of these cars and enjoy it on a day-to-day -day basis. It took a bit of a holiday, had a nice makeover, and now it's back. And the brand new Nissan Pulsar Triple S hatch is a really impressive all-rounder. It has everything you could possibly want in a hot hatch, plus at a price tag that won't make you sweat. If you're interested in a closer look, then visit the team at Northside Nissan, or jump onto our website, zoomtv.com.au. Today, I'm going to be checking out a people mover. Now, unlike most people movers that look like a square box, this one is a handsome vehicle. 
with eye-catching grille and classic lines. Now its brilliant design, both inside and out, makes it stand out in the crowd. Of course, I'm talking about the 2012 Chrysler Grand Voyager. Now check this out. Voila. One of the things that make minivans so appealing in the modern age of driving is the flexibility they offer. The Grand Voyager comes into its own when there are large loads to carry, whether it's people or just stuff you need to move. Thanks to its intelligently designed seating configuration, this car can carry almost anything. With the back seat stowed underneath, there is a massive capacity of 3,296 litres. Put the seats back up and you can carry seven people comfortably. Now, while I'm doing this disappearing act, Chrysler has done exactly the same thing to save space by hiding the spare wheel under the front seats. Now, the trim is stain resistant and also anti-static, so you don't get zapped when you get back in and out the car. Now, also, there are cup holders for the back seat passengers, and check this out, there is a mirror that you can check on the kids at all times. The Voyager is powered by a 2.8 four-cylinder turbo diesel engine, providing smoothness while delivering a fair blend of torque and economy, with a maximum torque of 360 newton metres from 1,600 revs to 3,000 revs. Now, this vehicle has a monster fuel tank, some 75.7 litres in capacity, so that gives you a driving range of around 700 kilometres and it does get along at a reasonable top speed of 185 kilometres an hour. But I don't know where you're going to use that, maybe in the Northern Territory. Now this car feels good, in fact it's spot on for a large people mover. It absorbs those bumps without giving it that wishy-washy feel. In fact, it drives like a luxury sedan. The steering is light enough to make the vehicle feel nimble and manoeuvrable despite its size, yet weighted enough to give it an in-control feel on the open road. There's a three-year warranty and a cam belt that doesn't need changing until 140,000 kilometres, unlike most modern vehicles which require a change at 100,000. The Chrysler Voyager is a good car and great for those big families. So do yourself a favour, drop in and see John Hughes in Shepparton and Road Vic Park and take one for a test drive. For more info, log on to zoomtv.com.au. Thank you, Uncle Ross. Nice work. We'll be back after the break with more Zoom TV. See you then. Australian muscle cars took on a whole new maturity in 1988 when Holden Special Vehicles opened its doors to the public. Now, HSV are renowned for producing vehicles we love to drive. Vehicles like this. It's the 2007 HSV Malu R8 Ute. The HSV Malu is a performance utility which has been produced by Holden Special Vehicles since October 1990. All versions of the Malu have been based on the mainstream Holden Utes, but have featured high-performance V8 engines and body kits. In June 2006, the Malu R8 broke the record for the world's fastest production utility pickup truck at 271 kilometres per hour. We were lucky enough to get our hands on this 2007 Malu from our friends at Melville Holden in Perth. Now, Malu, by the way, is an Aboriginal word that translates roughly as thunder. And when you plant the right boot in this sucker, you're going to get thunder, you're going to get hail, you're going to get lightning, you're going to get a trip to the dry cleaners. It might have been born to work, but the humble Aussie Ute has evolved into a much more sophisticated car that is now used more for recreational pursuits than it is for slogging it out on the job site. Vehicles like the HSV Malu are the ultimate expression of this new age Ute, possessing a level of performance, safety and refinement never imagined by the original Ute's creators in their wildest dreams. Gone are the days when Utes were uncomfortable, evil handling and in some cases downright dangerous. Today's Utes can do everything their sedan siblings can do and in the case of the Malu they do it even better. Like all HSV models the Malu builds on the Holden Ute with a unique set of body front and rear parts along with a unique hard tonneau cover that gives it its own distinctive muscular look without cutting into the basic Holden body structure. 
It's a craft HSV has perfected over more than 20 years of building hotter Holdens, and the result is that the Marlu looks as tough as nails. Matching the muscular look is Marlu's muscle-bound 7-litre V8 engine. With all that grunt under the bonnet, HSV was wise to ensure the chassis was up to the task of handling it. And with independent suspension front and rear, sports shocks, monster brakes and huge 19-inch wheels and tyres, it's more than capable of taming the beast. And while the Marlu has all the credentials for a place on the performance car grid, it doesn't lack anything in refinement either. And have a listen to this. Nice. Inside the cabin, the driver and passenger have leather sports seats, steering wheel and dials, as well as a full array of features like air, cruise, power windows and mirrors, automatic wipers, as well as rear parking sensors to ensure those special bumpers don't get scratched. There's also all the safety features we've come to expect from Holden. I'm with Matt Polella, pre-owned manager here at Melville Holden. G'day, Matt. How you going, buddy? How are you going? Nice Mate, going. what a handful of car. It's a 2007. What are the benefits of buying pre-owned vehicles? I think the fact that it comes from a reputable dealership like Melville Holden, and we offer you that three-year warranty or 175,000 Ks, which is very important. And you know who's, who's used this car, That's exactly right. 13,000 kilometres. It hasn't driven many at all, so one careful owner and um, a lot of money you know, spent on it. So. Now, the Malu, what do you like about this beast? Not much you can really hate about the car. It's a 7-litre um, W427 motor um, with twin turbos, so it's, it's the best of both worlds. Yeah. Um, and over 800 horsepower, it's just um, unbelievable on the road. It Amazing. is a beast, isn't it? It is. It is. You wouldn't it's be loading too many bricks in the back of this Definitely sucker. not, Alan. No, definitely <laughs> not. Definitely not. And the good news is the Marlu can be all yours if you get in quick. To Melville Holden, Canning Highway, Melville. Or as usual, follow the links from zoomtv.com.au. Here at Zoom TV, we strive to bring you the most entertaining, informative and of course educational stories on things that fly, drive and float. And we do this so you can experience a product without the added sales pressure of buying it. And how do we do it? Well we do it with our dedicated and talented production team and of course, unique presenters. This is the car you want your ex-wife to see you driving. What is your favourite TV show? Oh, Zoom. <laughs> oh, every Saturday, of course. Perfect. Good night, Australia. After the break, Aaron catches up with our celebrity hitchhiker, thanks to a sander, the lovely Sarah Grace from Winners and Losers. That's next on Zoom TV. Sarah, welcome to the back. Oh, oh. Mwah. Sarah, come here for a welcome kiss so people can see that we're friends. But in this strange car. <laughs> Such an actor. You're, you're safe. You're in the back of the Zoomobile I load and you have to answer my questions. I have to answer you. Okay. That's the, that's the deal with the lift. Really? Yeah, even though I'm taking you from one side of the Perth Entertainment Centre to the other, pretty much. Right, so I have to answer all questions or mm -hmm. else... You're just abandoning me. I'll just leave you in the middle of the Perth. Great, thanks. Thanks okay, for that. Okay, well, you're on Winners and Losers, which is winning in the ratings really well. Second series? Yes, we're into our second series, yep. And, yep. and uh, you're enjoying it, I presume? I love it. We have the best cast, we have the best crew. How did you end up on Winners and Losers? How did it come about? Um, I went in for an audition, like everyone does, and it just so happened that I, my character was getting married, and I was getting married in two weeks' time. So we started talking about that, and I think that might have helped me get the role. From there, my actual husband in real life got the role as my, my husband on the show. So, so a lot of winning. A lot of winning. Paul's really smart, my husband, because he if we've got a scene where he's he's got to be annoying me, he knows what to do to get under my skin, and then our scenes will be really real because I've just got all this pent up. She's got a rash. Did you give her some of your peanut skewers? No. Oh my god, what is she sobbing in that for? What's a reaction? Or? If you were to give any young actors or actresses or actors as they call them now any advice to get into acting, what would that be? You've got to really have a lot of self belief. You've got to be really determined. 
and I think don't be afraid to be yourself. Are you ready now for the fast five questions? Oh, you do this call? Yeah, yes. yeah, no, it is. D okay. But it's got to be fast, does it? Yeah, it's got to be. Well, you Zoom. Get, well, I, generally they're not. Oh, okay. <laughs> they're not, but you could give it a crack. Okay, we'll go. Are you ready? Fast, yeah. Okay, what was your first car? Uh, it, a Volvo. People used to laugh at me when I drove, drove past them, but I loved it. Same as Bertha. What is your opinion of the best car? currently out in the world today. I love the um, the Ford Focus. Dad brought home one day really like hotted up. XR5. That's the one. XR5. He brought home an XR5 and it's they're really, really great. Okay, so what's your opinion of the worst car, other, other than Bertha, who the mechanic now owns, yes, on great. the um, on the roads today? The worst car? The worst yeah. car? One of those little, um... Oh, the little smart cars. Oh, the little boxes, little... yeah. And what do you drive today? I drive a, um, a Ford Laser. Oh, Just wow. A, a, old 2000 laser but it's, but it's good it's classy it gets you from a to b it's all right and the last question this is deep yeah deep. what is your biggest fear killer clowns <laughs> have you come across any killer clowns no i just had this um really bad dream when i was about five mm -hmm. about this really massive killer clown and it was running around a lighthouse mm -hmm. and it had me in its hand <laughs> and ever since then I don't, Killer clowns. You've wrecked clowns for me now. Thanks. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you for being on Zoom. Oh, it's a pleasure. Well, another great show. Thanks for dialing us up. If you'd like to feature your product or service on the show, we'd love to hear from you. Just go to zoomtv.com.au. And if that's not enough Zoom for you, download our app where you can watch all the videos you want, and plus you'll get a reminder when your rego is due. Sensational. It is. Thanks again, Cass. Thank you. Lovely to see Thank you again. Till next time, bye for now. And that's a wrap.